political system is a great place to be, but it's nice when you can apply what you learn and show the world what you can do. Kids are some of the most entrepreneurial people I know. If you experiment, you can always get better. That's for sure. We've got Alain in the house. Alain's been with Mover Makers, and as part of that, we do uh, this IG Live together. Welcome, Alain. So, I mean, what do you got? How can I help? What's on your mind? The one question I think I will talk today is the idea of how, because I'm a teacher, and in some ways, I'm an employee. And when we talk about Movement Makers, we're trying to go and uh, be of service in the outside and the idea of entrepreneur. But it's, I find it so hard to go from a mindset of an employee to a mindset of an entrepreneur. I'm trying all kinds of things and I pretty much mess everything, but that's part of the learning. <laughs> and I was thinking of uh, some of the stories you may have on when you were an employee and then you, I knew that you did a switch and it was a shift where you said, okay, this is what I'm doing and then I'm sailing forward. So I don't have much experience as an employee. I did not work for a company for very long before doing my business. And I have to go back to my university days when, when I was an employee. So like being a student, not, a, not, not that I was a teacher or anything. Um, I just remember I was at a job. I was on a team of five people. And um, I get headaches with fluorescent lighting and um, get like blood sugar issues. And so I have to eat. Uh, and I was bringing food to the office and they didn't, they didn't like it. They didn't like that I was eating in the office. And I remember I had to have a... Um, a disc man back in the day before mp3 players and i wasn't allowed to listen to music any either and it was like super boring work like copy pasting data entries super boring stuff and so remember i would bring music bring my disc man put it on the floor and run i bought an extra long um head headphone connection that went from th i put it through my jeans up through my turtleneck and i'd always wear turtlenecks every day and then just have the little thing that popped out here so i can listen to music while i did this really boring work and I remember I was about to get fired. I never went to the lunches. I never went out with the, my coworkers and they were about to fire me. And then they looked at the results and I had done more work than the other four combined on my team. Like me, I did more work than all four of my other teammates combined. I don't know what they were doing, slacking off. And I get it, it's boring. And I just realized that this is, it's, it's too much politics in, inside of a, a job and just not, um, not interesting. And like they reward the wrong things, at least the company that I was at, you know, but it's, it sounds like a fairly common experience. I think the key though, to, you know, back to the questions is being in entrepreneurial groups. So, I mean, movie makers is great to be a part of yeah, right? amazing. Uh, reading books, watching videos, like making it part of the daily routine to consume some kind of content. And then is there anything you can do at the school to, like the kids are some of the most entrepreneurial people I know. Yes. Like everybody yeah, wants true. to be an entrepreneur now. When we were in high school, it just wasn't, nobody even knew what the word entrepreneur meant. Um, but now everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. So what about even like an entrepreneur club or an entrepreneur group or something for the kids so that it's in your actual ecosystem as opposed to just uh, when you go home? It's funny because if you, uh, I think it's last semester actually, Instead of having students to give me a presentation like the usual, I told them I wanted them to create a website with their end, their end presentation and just tell me about their website. And I know there was an aspect where there was the content, but just the learning of a website, I thought was they need to do that so that they can go outside of the school because the school system is a great place to be, but it's nice when you can apply what you learn and show the world what you can do. Like any job, you have some degree of flexibility and some things where you can't control. Like you, you can't control the curriculum, right? Like you have to teach what is government mandated to teach. But there is some degree of flexibility in what happens after school or even the examples you're using or um, even rituals in the class or maybe what's on the wall. Like maybe you have entrepreneurial quotes all over the homeroom. You know that you're in yeah um the assignments or projects or clubs or after school stuff like there's some i, I mean teachers there's so many great te teachers i think also get a really bad knock like there's it's more the edu education system that's a problem than the teachers that are the problem like there's so many yeah. great teachers who like deeply care about their students and who badly want them to win and are and they're frustrated that they can't do more to help because they're being told what to do it's funny because I think it's a marketing thing. I think that's a marketing issue if you think about it. We all do our things in a small classroom. The students are doing their work, 
but often it's it's not projected out to where we can just show other others of the world what we can do because it's like a portfolio like it, for me youtube is a portfolio of what i can do so and students can learn doing that as well you don't need to have a resume on a piece of paper you can actually show what you have what you produce like the content we always talk about create content and so on that's something they can do as with as long as they stay safe and their identity is protected and so on so that's always something to keep in mind yeah, I think every kid wants to be a YouTuber. So the, when yeah. they see, you know, when they see their teacher has a YouTube channel, even if it's not that big, but even that you're trying and you're creating, yeah. it, it already forms a point of connection versus yeah. everybody else. It's funny because I, I always show them because I have a, a YouTube channel for my science class and I always show them my first because I have two, I have a few YouTube channel and the first one was a Minecraft playing, like a playthrough. And it was just my voice, not my face. I was scared of doing all these things. And then I showed, oh, and now I'm doing face-to-face, uh, face-to-face videos. And then I have a like a Q&A session every Saturdays. But it's it's like a process of getting better at it. So I always show them the process so they know that I'm not. They cannot see me as a final product, but they have to see the journey at the same time. Yeah. And we often forget. I love it, dude. I love it. And and. I, I learned from you on a YouTube video. I got, where is it? Listen, okay, let me, let me get it. Ah, I like it. No. <laughs> you get better when you go outside. <laughs> yeah, so Alain, you're not using it right now because I hear some wind, but. I forgot, I forgot everything in the car. <laughs> so Alain made this, I'm not, a, I'm not much of a gear guy, right? But Alain made this video in his car. Uh, you just pulled over on the side of the street and you made, you know, it wasn't like the most produced video, but he just pulls over presses record in his car and like, oh, man, that sounds really good. What microphone are you using? And then he sends me, he sends me the link and it was this one. And it, were you using it with the, with the screen on or just like, just like this? Just like this, just a, a little bit. Then naturally when there's wind, it's better with a puff. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it's just, it's just like a, a beautiful voice. Like you, you're professional. So I'm learning from the movement makers as well. <laughs> there you go. Always teaching. You're always teaching. Um, That's true. It's, it's funny because when you said, like today is like a first to be outside in, in a place like this. Uh, I have a live, like YouTube live on Saturday morning. So I was here, so what can I do? And I decided to, so I try. I did experiment with my channel where I had the live on YouTube by, uh, by uh, it's, it's a power plant. I said, well, let's try something out, out of the blue. And I tried several ways of doing the videos so I could learn a thing. What sounds better? How can I ha- use my phone? Because I don't have all the gears in the world. So, so I have some some positive four views. I'm happy of those, those four views. And uh, but it's going well. I can see if you experiment, you can always get better. That's for sure. Yeah, and and I love that you're willing to try. You know, I think a lot of people just get the idea, but they never do anything with it. Where you are always willing to go off and try. So back to the mindset thing. You know, anytime you want to shift the mindset, it's it's really much more functional environment than anything else. The fastest way to shift the mindset is be around the people who think the way you want to think. And so, yeah. for for people who are an employee, you have your at home rituals, and then you have your your rituals at at work. And the good news is, I think like kids today are so entrepreneurial minded already like they're going to be more entrepreneurial than than you might be just in in their mindset and their way of thinking how do you encourage that how can you be a part of that how can you if it's sharing your entrepreneurial dreams or is there is there ways to bring that into the content inside the teaching where they're doing research on entrepreneurial companies i mean a lot of teachers use my videos in their classes and they use my books in their classes um it's like, I may, I, I never expected it, but it ended up becoming yeah. an amazing little tradition. Yeah. There's one teacher who's got a grade six or grade seven class in every, every year they go through your one word together and then they tweet at me and they share what their one words were. Like I never intended the book to be designed for grade six, grade seven students, but it's cool to see it being used that way. It is good. Actually the, uh, I was teaching virtually for two years, so I'm going back to school. So that's that's one of my idea to try to get the class set of your book so we can uh, because the one word is so important and even though it changes at least they can focus on what they want and how what feels great for them well if you do it let me know we'll get we'll get some maybe we'll get some signed copies off to them or we'll do like a zoom afterwards for the students or whatever what what um what age group are you working with 
It's a grade 9 and 10, so that's 13, 14. Um, but every so often, I have a grade 12 class, and they always have great questions. And because they, they're, in, they're going from a high school life to maybe like post-secondary or sometimes the workforce. And, uh, and sometimes just having a vision of where, where they can go or where to focus their thoughts. There's so many options out there. I feel bad sometimes for them because for me, there were fewer options. Now for them, it's the sky's the limit when you think about it. So, well, they're lucky. So, lucky people said for sure. They're, they're lucky to have a teacher like you, man, who cares and wants to see them win. That's what we need to do, and and also to build confidence because it's interesting. Because as I try to build their confidence, they help me as well because they have ideas that I've never thought of, like perspective and so on. And that's why we need to listen to teenagers more often. Often we forget that we say, well, we tell them what to do, but they have they have a wealth of uh, perspective that is amazing. I agree. That's why I listen to you and I bought the microphone. <laughs> I know. Right? And uh, the be- uh, let's see, what is the other one? Um, I know that the reason why I want to play outside is uh, I used to be a geologist and I do try to play outside a bit more. And I try to tell people around me and students that inside is great because we're protected between our four walls. But as soon as you go out there, you need to trust yourself a little, little bit more. And there's so much more you can actually accomplish if you just give it a try. And uh, it's a confidence matter and a mindset, as you mentioned earlier. I don't know how or why he did this, but I remember I had a history teacher in high school, grade 12 history, who uh, would often take us outside for the class. Like if it was a really nice day, he's like, great, pack up your books, we're going outside. And we just sit on the grass under, the, under a tree and we would teach, yeah. he would teach the class outside on the ground. Um, not when we had a test or anything, but just like a lecture. It's like, that was, that was really fun. It was different. Like, what, what are we doing? Yeah. Why are we not in the classroom? But yeah, just, just getting outside and getting out in nature. I, I don't know. It, it um, made it a lot more memorable, that's for sure. Actually, I should have a story for you. I, I, I teach science, and there's always a, a unit on ecosystems. And by the school, there's a little creek, and I always used to go there uh, just with the class so we can, we can go in the puddle, and, and boys and girls would just go and step in the water. There was just this much water, but just... They'd get back in the class all dirty, but they were happy. So there was a time when the board says, for safety, we cannot be too close to the water. And, and the path was close to, the, close to the, uh, this creek. And then with my class, we figured that we could all bring all those, uh, uh, let's see, all, uh, let's see, how do you call those? You know when you go into a boat, like safety jackets and those Life banana jackets? floaters? <laughs> so I went to the VP saying we need to then have floaters and a safety jacket just to make sure the board is happy. <laughs> and he says, no, no, don't go out to the school with banana floaters because we'll all look bad. And he says, it was a bit silly, but, but the students were all excited just to go outside and play. But we still do. And uh, the, uh, two years ago, we did the uh, uh, earthworm hunt to try to see how the population of earthworms, but just, just play with the dirt. People... Often inside, you play with your books, you're in the desk, and they forget that you have to play a bit. So what did you do today to play, Evan, uh, besides the uh, IT Live? I, I, I've been, so I'm talking to my team all day, but I just took a, a break at, just before this. I had 25 minutes, and I was out uh, on the grass with my, with my mini dashund out in the backyard uh, looking at my emails and what I had coming up. But just it's a, it's a beautiful day here in Toronto. Let's get some sun. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Since moving to a house out of a condo, we've been doing a lot more grounding, a lot more time outside, backyard, campfires, gra- uh, you know, barefoot on the grass. It's um, very different than the condo living. I bet I need to check the two new videos because I haven't. I don't remember seeing your re- new recording videos. I know you were painting, and I need to see how it looks like. So. That's my, my next thing in the coming week. Coming week. I don't know if I even have any new videos of this place. Okay, that's maybe. The only, the, listen, Alan, the, like we just moved, right? So the only thing that's set up is, is the, look, the, the office is set up because that's the first thing I have to do, right? So you can kind of see. Oh, I see. The office. Nice. So that's set up. But everything else is just empty. <laughs> oh, <God>. oh. <laughs> You're still moving in. Okay, We're that's still good. moving in. Yeah, no, no. It's like it's completely, it's completely empty. Oh, look at this. The, Amazing. The, this is kind of set up. I don't know what this is going to become, but it's yeah. all, it's all, it's all empty. You know, like the the path outside is all empty. It's just, 
we're still sleeping on the floor. You know, we ordered a bed oh, that comes in four weeks or something. So the only oh, thing that, that is remotely set up is just the office because I got to film content. That's true. Yeah. But the content, of, that's nice. So I have, I have not uh, filmed anything kind of showing the house or anything yet. So if you go looking for it, you won't find anything. That, what I just did is probably the most I've filmed. So there you go. You got the tour. It's a good project. It's a big project. It's a big project. Are you going out of the city in the, in the summer? Like I just left for Quebec City for a couple of days. And, uh, and you, are you going anywhere? With the world opening up, it's been crazy. Like everybody wants me to go and speak at different things. And I don't want to spend, you know, 50 out of 52 weeks on the road. So I'm picking one thing per month to go to. And Toronto is so beautiful in the summer that I'd, like, I'd rather go away in February than miss out on all the greatness that's here. No, oh, that makes sense. Actually, the uh, in the coming, the coming weeks, and the, because it's the summer, I hope to do a, a YouTube live at the the Rom. That's one of my my goal, and I want to do a YouTube live at the AGO, just to just to have a background different. Uh, and I'm trying to see. I'm trying to get up to get a small whiteboard, like maybe 30 centimeters by 45, so I can carry it around. So I can, uh, if I have to do some science, I can do some notes for. Uh, for the YouTube life. So I think that'll be nice. That's it. I love that. I mean, but the entire world is science. Exactly. I know. Right. And I think, I think I needed that. I needed the world to open up a little bit and uh, it's nice because otherwise we're inside it. You're doing great videos inside, but for science, when you can uh, touch and apply it, it's always, I find it more fun. I mean, just around you is a, is a thousand different science videos. If you want to explain physics or geometry or i mean it's all it's all there it, a little I, I like the little uh the little pocket uh whiteboard and you do a little mini lesson a, a little mini science lesson as you go yep and that and that's the beauty i know that i always have a few people watching my lives all the time and always bring questions and it makes it nice why are you doing youtube live though that's a good question there's a few reasons first I like to be able to answer questions for people that have them. So it's a bit like the teacher live thing. Second, I find it's less work for editing the video if I do it live. And sometimes I don't always have time to edit them. And, uh, and third, um, sometimes I was running out of ideas and I said, well, let's get people to give me ideas. And that idea is from you, Evan. As people say, oh, I look at comments of people and answer questions. And I thought it would be nice. Um, so, and that's once a week on Saturday morning. I already have 1,600 subs. I'm a few thousand away, uh, like a thousand fold smaller than you, but it's going there slowly. And, uh, but it's good. This summer, I want to do more videos and content and so on. So, I love it, dude. I love it. And if you need the interaction, it's great. The only thing with the YouTube Live is once the live is done, YouTube doesn't promote it anymore. Like if you ever go to a search page or you look at suggested or the home page, you may see it when it's live, but afterwards you'll never see a live broadcast, almost never see a live broadcast. YouTube really destroys lives in their algorithm after it's done. Okay. So a strategy to go live is you could go live and then unlist it afterwards and then download it and edit a second of it and then put it up as a regular video or just edit out the beginning like a quick edit of just deleting. Are we live? I mean, I don't know how you start. Like, I is, yeah. is this working? Is shaky? You know, um, yeah, edit that out so. and then put that up as a video because the lessons you're teaching are still relevant in three months and six months and a year. So, and that's something I have to look into for uh, maybe having an editor because I usually I try to do live between thirty and sixty minutes. Okay, and I have several subjects, so because I can have chapters in the videos. Because I've done that, so sometimes I go through stream, StreamYard, I download the video, then I upload it and use chapters. So I hope that the search will go well. Um, but I think I would like to see if I can take that, those long one-hour videos and cut it down in, in shorter sections for, uh, for Instagram, for example, if I want to do that, or just have shorts on YouTube. These, uh, these are things I need to look into. So Yeah, you could. Uh, I did if you're not going to do it yourself, then once you add complexity of having somebody else, whether that's somebody you hire or like a formal student that you really liked or whatever. Um, but the next, like the easy momentum step is you're already making the videos. 
once a week going live, you have more plans coming up, which is great. Like I love the the street science. Yeah, that's it. It's street science. I land street science. You go and you explain something. <laughs> But and it'd be a shame if you make those videos and then it, they never get any views because YouTube then kills the the the, um, the views on them. So uh, even just that, like go live and then put it to unlisted afterwards, and then just edit the first two seconds out or eight seconds or whatever whatever the the junk is at the beginning as you're getting ready, yeah. and then upload it again just as a as a regular video without editing chapters and all the other stuff. Just to that have be it. better for long term. Yeah, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, thank you for the the input there. And it doesn't mean you can't then go hire an editor and do the rest of it later, right? Cool. But what yeah. what often happens is, oh, I don't have an editor, so then I can't do it, and then nothing happens. Yeah. No. The uh, I was talking. Uh, there's a few people that've been following me, and I've, I started in June last year, so I have a I have a, a YouTube live that I've either live or I re-uploaded the video. So it's been at least 52 weeks. So I'm proud. It's a, the momentum, the idea of momentum. I'm doing it once a week, and so it's very nice. I love it, man. I love it. Yes, indeed. Well, it's great to see you. Great to see the smile. Thank you for bringing. You're kind of bringing the street science already to us, showing us uh, very nice. The the beautiful. I'm I'm jealous. I love it. Some views here, so so you don't have to travel very far. You just have to do IG live with people. And you're traveling at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Alan. Thank you for your positivity and, and love. And always appreciate you, man. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Evan. And take care, all movement makers. Take care. Bye-bye. Enjoy your trip. Cheers, man. There she is. Hey. Hey. How's it going? How's it going? Good. How are you, Jen? I'm great. I'm great. It's hot down here in Florida. I'll tell you that much. I like it. Well, I'm in Canada and it is, it is not so hot. We had a couple of days of hot and now it's, now it's just, it's still hoodie weather outside. Oh my gosh. Nope. I think I wear a hoodie like maybe twice a year down here. I'm down in West Palm. So it doesn't get like that ever. <laughs> I love it. Well, well, uh, Jimmy, Jen's been with Movement Makers for a while and we're doing uh, a fun IG live together as a thank you. So what do you got? How can I help? What's on your mind? Well, um, I just would love to talk to you a little bit about like, you know, how to get the YouTube following going. Um, last year I had um, my account with Facebook was hacked and I got deleted and Facebook was like my main platform. Okay. And I had about 40,000 followers and I was like on the upswing of really doing some good things. And when that got deleted, I fought with Facebook back and forth for like seven months, never got my account back. And so, um, the good thing is, cause there's always like, you know, something good that comes from any, you know, anything, um, is that it, it really encouraged me to branch out into other platforms and to, you know, IG and, uh, I groaned, but I did a TikTok and then I had a video go viral and now I have a decent following there and then YouTube and LinkedIn and, um, and I'm a one man show. So I'm kind of doing everything myself. So, um, I'm not quite sure where to begin. I'll tell you a little bit about what I do. Um, yeah. I have kind of a unique business, uh, and which, if you can help me brand this, I will, you know, ha ha. -la. <laughs> Let's make that our goal. That's our goal. Yes, Here we go. exactly. Exactly. So um, I do what is called equine assisted empowerment. So I have six horses, mm -hmm. four of which, so think um, personality profiling. If you've ever taken like a disc or Myers-Briggs or something like that. And four of my horses are one of each of the major personality profiles. So if you believe okay. it or not, horses have personalities just like we do and we call it the pony personas you can go to my website take, take and take my quiz and figure out which horse it is um my bet on you is that you are a dante so um each one right. uh, yes so and we kind of joking what did you start with equine assistance what was the third assisted word? empowerment so a think tony robbins with horses yeah empowerment yeah. just getting just getting the words down okay yeah 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 so it's it's and i actually met you through uh your live with ray higdon that you did a while back Okay. And great. Um, Ray's had his team at my place, and and they've done my, a lot of my experiences through that. So I do basically like corporate team building empowerment. My my um, my primary market's women, and my secondary market is um, corporations, business. I just recently did a live um, training virtually for a team out in California that works for Facebook. So um, so things like that. So that that's really kind of what I do, and it's 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 kind of a challenge to explain. It's like. It's like, can you imagine the person that invented gum? 
you know, if you invented gum, like how do you tell people like what it is and how to, it didn't have flavor back then. It was just this resin. Well, do you eat it? No, you don't eat it. You just chew it. Well, does it taste good? Well, no. Well, does it have good, you know, is it got nutrition? Well, no, you just, what the hell? So that's kind of where I'm at. Like, how do you brand something that is, is challenging for people to understand? So what are people coming to, to the, to the, to your center for? So most of my, everything that we do now is virtual since COVID. So they're coming here to understand who they are. Like the, one of the most powerful questions you'll ever ask yourself is who am I? And to determine what that looks like through a 1200 pound animal is a completely unique experience. And then, um, and then to have the opportunity to come here for, you know, on site um, as I get more established with my facility down here. So I just moved to voice Palm from Orlando. So I have uh, virtual courses and I do masterminds. Okay. So when you say I'm a, let's role play with me then. So I get a better sense. So I'm a Dante. What, I, what would is, bet, I would bet money on it. All right. What, what does that mean? What, what, what how, how am I enlightened now that I know that I'm a Dante? Oh my gosh. Because you're, you know, just describe the characteristics of somebody that you would meet, like, you know, having a conversation with them, you know, you're decisive, you're solutions driven, you're about taking action. You're bold. Um, you're charismatic. You know, you're you're either arrogant or affable. You're effusive. You're probably a little bit mischievous. So you know, you don't you're not afraid to get into a little bit of trouble. You know, and um, you you actually you know you're out there to change the world. You're out there to do something big. Only about ten percent of the population are actually true Dantes. Think uh, Steve Jobs is a Dante and, and uh, Tony Robbins is a Dante. He's like this giant 1,200 pound fiery red massive presence kind of character. And he's just larger than life and, um, just, and knows and, and isn't afraid to take action to do things. Am I close? Uh, I, I, well, I mean, those are great. Those are great characteristics. I, I have to live up to being the Dante, I guess. Um, <laughs> what, what, and Ray, uh, Higdon, Ray incidentally is a trace who is uh, like like Dante is a Steve Wozniak or a Steve Jobs traces the Steve Wozniak, you know, and you have you have um, trace characteristics as well. And he is uh, this white unicorn type of horse. He is he's white with blue eyes. He's completely unique, um, a little bit more introverted, a little bit more of an observer. So, again, you have these characteristics as well. Analytical, you're dependable, reliable. You um, are trustworthy. You're kind of an old soul. You like to get things done. You like to put the period at the end of sentences, you know, something, you know, things like that. And, and you do your best work when you're creatively inspired. So, and then you could even go into like Carl Jung's, the archetypes. So like Dante's my warrior, Trace is my magician, uh, Maverick, who is a racehorse that won more money than Seabiscuit and got rescued and ended up at my, at my, all of my horses yeah. are rescues. Do, do, you yeah. know, do you know Seabiscuit's my favorite movie of all time? What? I yes, I did not know that, but now I do. I've seen that movie like thirty times. Oh, so now it's a pretty good he, movie. He, he's and he's the opposite of you. He's he's your um your king or queen. Like he's this represents the sovereign. He's calm. He's quiet. He's reserved. He's he's regal. You know, and he takes care of the whole herd, kind of behind the scenes. Uh, Brene Brown is a maverick. Okay, so and, so are these these are your. Like Dante no. Trace, these are your. You came up with these. Yes. Or, or, okay, perfect. So these and, are my four horses that I that I have rescued, and mm -hmm. you know Dante Trace Maverick and Bella. I'm a Bella. Okay. So, so so are people coming to you? Is it basically like taking a personality test? But it just, is exactly like that. I have a, you go take my okay. quiz, so you can go to my website, and that's the starting point. Like that, that's kind of the start of the funnel. So um, I, you know, I'm do I'm again, I'm doing this on myself. If anybody that loves horses wants to come and um, help me with my social media, I need help. I'm drowning and so much to do because people really need this right now. People need to understand like how to stand in their truth, how to have this journey for themselves. And we take them down this, this incredible experience through horses to understand that. And um, th with the ultimate mission to say, can save horses and change lives. Okay, so then what's the connection that by a certain percentage of your profits go to supporting more horses or, or what yes, else? Yes, like, well, it's, I think of, do you, you've, you ever had an Impossible Burger? You ever, you ever heard yeah, of Yeah, the vegetarian burger? one, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. So 
the, and Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger were both invented by two the same gentleman named Pat Brown. So Pat Brown, number one, that invented Impossible Burger, actually wanted to subvert climate change by encouraging people that were on the fence between eating meat or eating um, a, a vegetarian option, at least something that didn't taste like, you know, that that tasted good. He knew he wasn't going to get the backyard Kansas City barbecue or to get to go vegan, but he could maybe have an option to. So that was that was his thing. But his whole goal wasn't to make a veggie a veggie burger. His whole goal was to subvert climate change. So we, how do you do that? You can't, you know, again, you're not just going to get people to stop eating meat. You got to give them a quality option. So he took a subversive approach to a socially conscious problem. And that's exactly the same thing I'm doing. Because, again, what do you think of when you think of a horse? You think of, you know, their speed. You think of the Kentucky Derby, Sea Biscuit, you know, um, the Budweiser Clydesdale. You think of their, at their physical capability. But what we're doing is we're healing people. We are, I'm doing, I'm working with post-traumatic stress disorder victims. I'm working with veterans. I'm working with women from abuse, but it doesn't have to be like that. And it can be, like I said, you know, right. You know, people bring their teams here for, um, you know, touted, why does Susie in accounting hate Doug and marketing? Well, if we understand that Susie's a maverick and, you know, it's just team building, right? Team building with horses, understanding yourself through horses, all with the mission of showing the world because only one out of 11 people own a horse, showing the world the power that horses can have outside of their physical ability, outside of their ability to run fast or jump high. And so when we take that subversive approach, we might get, we might move the needle a little bit on the tens of thousands of horses that get shipped out of this country to slaughter every year for human consumption. That's not okay with me. So for how- human consumption, wow, okay. Yes, yes. Why not just go more direct? Like horses, why not create a, a um, and I'm just playing with you here, like we're brainstorming. As opposed to going down the personality test route, why not create a place for people to heal with horses? I have that, that yes. <laughs> right now, all of my programs are virtual because I do not have a facility, but um, that I can host people on site and hosting people on site is tricky because people bring their garbage people bring their garbage and I don't want everybody's garbage being dumped onto my horses so anytime that anybody comes to on site and having an interaction on site with my horses that's going to be like the next level like you need to you need to have the information you need to know some of the things virtually before you show up um and then when you can that's like that's not the first step in the funnel if that makes any sense. Yeah, but then it's fine. But so there's a process, but yes. it doesn't, but, but why not make the business healing with horses? That, well, that's what it is. Kind of, but like what, what it comes off as, at least in the initial description is yep, yep. It's, a per, it's a personality test to help you develop self-awareness through the lens of my four horses, as okay. opposed to, no, we're like, we're going to help you heal. Cause I mean, horses are, I don't want to tell you how magical horses are. Um, but if the business is not about, like, it feels almost like a gimmick that, okay, here's a person, and, and, and I, it's not meant to offend you. But You're not going to. <laughs> if, it's, if it's, like, if the real thing is I want to heal people through my horses or through horses in general, mm -hmm. and, and that leads to saving more horses around the world as well. <laughs> Yep. And that leads to like, you have your center now of four, but maybe that becomes a hundred horses and maybe you open up centers in, I don't know, I don't know what States allow, well, you know, I want to so. go global. My vision is huge. So yeah. And, and all you need is four, you don't need 400, but four can feed 400, you know, just by having a program with four trained horses to, to offer this, you know, and branding my four, but I, I get, I hear your point. So it's like a re it's like a retreat. You, you can have you can have a retreat experience. Yep. Right. That's how I started. And so COVID hit. I was doing. I was. I was only live. I didn't have any virtual any virtual programs at all. Okay, but things are okay. opening up. Things are back. Yes. Right? Uh, and and Florida is Florida has been open for ever. It never closed. <laughs> so you're good. I'm in Canada. We have the the most restrictive you know, laws yes. and stuff. But, but even again, now, we're open. right now, right now, I don't have a, an on site facility that I can host people go um, partner with somebody who does. Mm -hmm. I did that last summer. I, I uh, how do what I really want to do? Cause I don't have the reach that I would have with 
a virtual program. I really want to get my the virtual programs so I can have more reach. And people can then use my virtual programs and have their horses in Canada. And I don't have to be there. If they come and experience my, my virtual programs, then they can go to a facility in Canada and experience it there with any horses that are trained with my methods. So you have a couple options. I mean, at the, at the, I think at the end of the day, what we need to get across is people are healing through the horses. Correct. It's not about the personality test to know that you're extrovert, introvert, Dante, whatever. It's mm-hmm. like you, you can heal your wounds, your trauma, and become more whole by following this process Correct. to being with horses. So then yep. it becomes, is there any micro healing that can be done through, uh, through, through an Instagram live, through a Zoom, through a virtual? Like can yep. that, can, if I can't actually touch the horse but Dante is coming up and, you know, snorts into the camera or something like, can I still yep. That's, mm-hmm. micro heal? Right. So yep. instead of thinking like just about reach, I, I get it, but it's more about, like, can we give, can we help people? Can we yes. heal people? The business yes. is healing people, right? Initially when you said, I'm thinking of branding my horses and you're going or branding the business and you're going through, um, uh, personality. I was thinking like horsepower, like you should horsepower just makes a lot of sense, but, but healing with horses that's the brand yeah healing with horses is the brand yes healing with horses so everything that we do now is about how do we heal people with our horses okay and i don't know what an online experience looks like and and that's like how do you how can you create something that is authentic that like yes people are getting an experience and you feel um is true you know like it's not just it's not just a pony show, <laughs> right? We're not just like bringing some horses out and say, hey, you're healed. Like it, it actually, how can we create an online experience that will be actually healing for people? Not as much as actually being able to touch Dante or ride Dante or hang out with Dante, but still there's something in there. Um, I don't know what that program looks like, but it, but that's that's the program where you're taking people's trauma and issues and where they've been burned and we're helping them heal. Yes, that the programs are created. Okay. That's done. Like I have, um, an one hour free thing I do every week. I have, um, I go live pretty much every day with some kind of something. Um, and I have like, you know, um, a five day challenge that I do once a month. That's like, I go for the first four days, I go through each one of the horses and help you understand, you know, why Bella is codependent, why Maverick needs trust why, you know, Trace needs motivation and, you know, why Dante needs engagement and like what each personality needs to go through the healing process. And then on the last day, um, I, I give some, adip- you know, I give some bonus materials and then I go through my stack. Is the healing more dependent on the personality type or the type of trauma that they've been through? Uh, the personality types, believe it or not. Okay. The, the type of tra- trauma is trauma, man. Doesn't really matter what kind it is. I really want to be clear too, because this isn't just about trauma. This is um, because, you know, there's two types of people that go to per any kind of personal development experience. Um, it's the people that want to heal and that have a gap in their life. They want to close and the people that want to go to the next level. So, you know, you have those, those two types and um, I, I want to, I do want to cater to both, but I don't only want to cater to the people that are suffering from trauma because I mean, it, we all need healing because healing is not just healing a wound. Healing is transcending where we are. In my mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah. Um, so that's really what it's about. And, and understanding um, who you are will help you understand how to heal. Cause you do, it's, it's totally dependent on the personalities. You, Dante is going to heal by going out and, you know, chopping down trees or going to kickboxing or something where Maverick's going to heal by reading a book or meditating. Right. And there's just def- different, everybody has their different ways of, of processing stuff and understanding who you are, will understand how you need to heal. And that's what I teach. How do we, how do we turn it into a healing experience beyond just the, like Dante represents something. He represents a personality type, but yep. like if, da- if Dante wasn't a horse and, and you just had your four personality types yep. and you go tell them, okay, go chop down trees or go hit your next mission or go, you know, whatever it is. 
how do, how do you how do you actually start the healing process with the horse live together instead oh, of telling me I, to go read the book or something i yeah. take um i i i tell stories i take them through a metaphor i'll take them through like I ha- I'll have um, I'll have like a two, a couple of cones and I'll do like a figure eight with the horse and and I'll have them or, and then like a jump and I'll have them jump a jump. So I'll have them do two very and all for horses. I'll have them do like the same task, but I show people how they show up differently. Everybody's doing the exact same task, but they're all doing it differently. And as their me as their leader or as their healing facilitator i'm there to show like you should see this i mean it's incredible it really is and it's it's so hard to explain because so bella will be out there and she's like zooming around the figure eights and she has to like she feels like she needs to overachieve all the time and she's a pleaser and she's codependent she second guesses herself and so being able to be empowered and to slow down and get focused and understand that simple things done well is actually how it's going to bring you more centered. So I take them through the process and they watch Bella. They watch her ear change. They watch her body language change. They watch her breathing change and go from whatever she's doing where she's a little bit concerned to, oh, it's just a figure eight. And then I'll get Trace out or Dante out. Trace, for instance, because he's the opposite of her. I take him through the figure eight and I'll say, Trace, just trotting slow like the chain gang, just watching him go, oh, we're doing this again. And then showing what I can do as his leader, as his mentor, as his facilitator to get him to be inspired about doing the exact same task he thought was boring 30 seconds ago and how that can get him more centered. And then I can take Dante and say, okay, stop trying to turn the figure eight into something else and make your own game out of it. Because if you aren't ready for a Dante, Dante's are always ready for you. They're always ready. They always have an answer. And you got to be one step ahead of the Dante's. And then the same thing with Mavericks, same exact exercise. Doing the demos with Mavericks are really hard because all Maverick, Mavericks need time and patience and need to learn how to build trust. And so I'll do the exact same exercise with each horse and show very different uh, tactics and very different ways to allow them to become their true centered self in like a 30 minute demo. So then how can we take the demo to an experience? And and like the easiest one would be like, Hey, they're, they're on the horse, but that doesn't scale because you're going to do four at a time and and there's you as my, but so what could we do so that it's an experience with people? So they're not just watching it happen and you're mm-hmm. talking about it. Get somebody, a horse walks out. They don't know what horse this is, but they, if they've gone through it, like, oh, that's Dante. I'm a Dante. And they can see it happen. Okay. I can see it, but how do I feel it? Maybe it's like, are we doing a group meditation session and we're all touching Dante? Or are we like, what can we actually do together? Do we go for, do all the Dantes go for a, 7 a.m. hike together and we're walking we take turns like holding Dante or that's that's the easy part when you're talking on site like yeah. when you if you come to c- come down I'll do if you're ever next time you're in West Palm Beach come and experience it my gift my gift to you because you'll it's magic you that is not the hard part the the tripping block that I need to h- help with is um how to make it a virtual experience you know, because people are like people will be on, and like when I, did, I presented, I presented for about thirty people, and I would present it for Rank Makers Live a couple, you know, a couple years ago, et cetera. Like that's the experience, and what I what I had to do when COVID hit was I still had to feed six horses and take care of ten acres, and you know, I still had all, all of my overhead, so I had to take all that on site experience and put it in a virtual format, and I did it. And the, it's incredible. And, and people are, are on from all over the world and people from Dubai and Australia and Canada. And they're all watching this all at the same time. And I did it live and it was blowing people's minds because they were like, I never thought I could have an experience like this with a horse virtually that would totally change my life. One gal quit her job the next day and started her own accounting firm. 
You know, I mean, the results are mind blowing. And then started doing this feminine movement dance thing. It totally changed your life, changed your relationship with her husband, changed her business, changed everything from this five day, um, this course that I did that now I now run as a six week mastermind. So, um, the marketing, like, like, see, like, even here in this conversation where I keep coming back, I'm like, no, come on, I got, <laughs> I, I'm not doing it on site right now. That's virtual, that because I really want to be able to have more impact with more people. I would have never had the impact. The the woman that did um, from Facebook wrote me after and said that they did their entire team did a huge trust building exercise after my course. And she's, she's actually flying out to visit me after doing my course for an hour, you know, and it was, and it was, it was virtual. And so once people dip their toe into this pool, they, they could care less if it's horses or dogs or squirrels. They're like, this is impactful because what you see isn't a color or an, um, an INFP or you know a, a thing it's an animal like to your point how did you feel what did what do you experience on the 31st time you watch Seabiscuit you've seen it a million times but that movie makes you feel a certain way so does this and it allows you to create in your mind a visual and experiential um, idea of who like how to deal with the Dantes of the world that are kind of pushing your num, you know, pushing your buttons, the traces of the world that you can't get off the couch, how to understand who you are. So how do I get that message out to people in a way where they want to, you know, they want to convert, they want to, you know, I want to get conversions. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I don't want to do the on site at the moment. Not right now. But so you've got options. Like in terms of the branding, I would call it heal, heal with horses or healing with horses. It's different. It's unique. It stands out, especially if you're going after a business world, you're going to the rank masters or other conferences, like we're going to do what with horses? Like it's different. Yes. Uh, the personality stuff I would not lead with. Okay. It might be how you get there, right? Like once they're in, they don't know how they're going to heal with horses. Then, then we're following Jen's methodology. Right. And, and part one of the, and like, Hey, okay, we can't overwhelm the horses. So we're going to do X. You have to know you're a Dante before you go in and hang with Dante or whatever, whatever your four steps or eight steps or 10 steps or your steps. Yes. But, but people don't care about the steps. Nope. They, they want the, the healing with the horses. That's what we've been promised. So how do we heal with horses? Okay. Anybody who you've done anything with, you try to turn it into an annual thing. So um, if you done, if you did rank masters and it left you cool, how do I speak at the next event? How do I speak at the, like you speak at every rank masters going forward? If you've done something with Facebook, cool. How do we turn this into an annual thing? Got it. So that every year or every quarter we come in and we help like Facebook is such a big company that they could, if they loved you, they can enter you to other departments, but you have to ask for it, right? Exactly. If they had a great time. Like, Hey, is there anybody in another department? Oh yeah. That I might just be a good did fit? this like three days ago. So, and she was blown away, blown away. So, like, so while she's still feeling the energy <laughs> before she moves on to all the other things that are, she's dealing with in her life right yes. now, right? And yeah, her company. I, in fact, I messaged her right before I got on here. So Good. I'm on it. That's the, yeah, I'm on it, man. I, so, I just, okay. Like, so with her team, it's like with her, with her, who's make who's the decision maker for her group. How can you come in? every quarter or every year yes. and do it again. Cause there's new people who come in all the time. There's new team yep. members who come in all the time. There's new issues that pop up all the time. And even if they had you in six months ago, it doesn't mean, Oh, now they got it and they don't need any reinforcement or training oh, ever oh again. God. Right. So, yes. so everybody that you've done something with now we create an annual program with them. Okay. So it's not a one and done thing. It's an ongoing thing. And um, it, it's, the, one to many, I think, is really where I'm going to have more impact, too. Not, well, not necessarily. You know, like, I think the, the ability to hang with the horses, actually be there, is magical. Yes. And the way to scale that is not necessarily you having a thousand locations across America, but you could train the trainer on how to do it. Yes. And I have a program, like, that's already established. All of my programs are established. It's right now, just people don't know what it is. You know, and they don't know what it. They don't know what it does. Well, they're going to heal. Like the mechanics of how it works doesn't matter. Nobody cares, right? Okay. It, it, like it's the top line. I'm going to teach you to heal with horses, and we can do it in person, 
or we can do it as an online event. And especially if you're bringing it to the business community where most of the people, you know, most of the people in the equine business, you know, they're a lot more artists than they are entrepreneur. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't know. (laughs) Well, but that's the advantage (laughs) because... But anybody who anybody who raises horses or is in the equine business would would talk about how magical and majestical horses are and how healing they can be to people and the like connection they had to people. Everybody, the vibe that you're putting out around the horses, everybody in the horse industry would express something similar. They may not agree with like personality types, but most people wouldn't say like horses are not magical if you're in the equine business, right? But the ability to turn that into a a, a, a service that could help businesses, corporations, nobody knows how to do that. So this is now where you're standing out and unique and different. Yes. So we call it healing with horses. Everybody has all of their team building, you know, there's all that. Every business, every major corporation does some sort of team building where, you know, whether it's- But not with horses. No, I'm the only person in the world doing what I'm doing. And everybody has personality type stuff that you don't want to be in that business. We're not in that business. We're in the healing with horses business. How is that going to, how is healing with horses going to translate into um, like breaking into, to corporations? Well, how do you, how do you help people? Like not, what's the result of people they got they they got found me through because the, the title is leadership with horses, how to be a better leader through horsemanship. This is you are talking my age old argument with me and um, my assistant. We've gone back and forth between should it be leadership and like Tony Robbins or should it be healing and more like Deepak Chopra? Because it's both. It really is truly both. Because you become empowered through the horses and you heal through the horses and how you become empowered is how you heal. But you can't you can't lead with that to, you know, a corporation that's having trouble with interdepartmental conflict. You know what I mean? Like, that's a tough sell. What's the problem with the, the conflict? The, the communication or you know, they're just not doing their job. It's more surface. You know, you start talking about healing for businesses you know, they, they're like, mm, I don't know. Individuals, that's, I think that, but I don't know, I could be wrong. But my, in my, my, my experience in the past is that from a business perspective, they want leadership. From an individual perspective, they want healing. So you have Heal With Horses as your main website. And then if you know you're dealing with a corporate, you can talk about the leadership benefits of it. As simple as that. Okay. You're, you're not, you're, you're having, we're having, we've had this conversation so many times. Oh my God. It's... <laughs> It's like, which way do we go? The way you're going to get most of the business anyway is going to like, it's service-based business. So the way you get most of the business is not, nobody's searching for leadership with horses or like healing events with horse. Like people are not, so we're we're not winning the SEO game. No, (laughs) for sure. Which is fine. To your point about like, we're selling gum. People don't know what it is. So you're going to get word of mouth referrals, which is why we need to talk to everybody who's experienced it create annual programs with them, not just let it be, because you could, you could have been great, but they may not be thinking come in again. Right. No, no, no. Like you need to reinforce this. We need to do this every, every year, every quarter. And and then giving them the tools to talk about it. Absolutely. Amazing. Then, and that's, I think that's to your point, you know, getting, getting on people's annual rosters is brilliant. That's, that's not something I really thought about, I've thought about like hitting the businesses and getting like corporate stuff, you know, once a quarter, once every six months, but I never thought about doing like summits and, you know, I, I definitely want to like one of my goals is to present with, you know, Grant Cardone and, you know, people like yourself that know people that know people. Cause this is, it's powerful. I mean, I've spoken on t- stage at Tony Robbins. I've done a Ted talk. I'm getting ready to be published. My book's coming out next month, you know, so there's a lot happening, um, it, you know, for me. And I've, been busting my ass for seven years and actually 18 years with horses. So it's, it's been a tough road. Um, I started it's, out with, but nothing. listen, anytime, anytime you're doing a speaking gig or you get a corporate gig, mm-hmm. you default to saying, okay, we should do this again in a quarter. Yeah, absolutely. That's Let's create an annual program. You had an amazing experience while they're still there. Cause then they're going to go back to their daily life and get destroyed again. Correct. So while they're still in the energy and the vibe, they've got the horsepower with them. Uh, let's figure out an annual program to keep this energy going. Yeah. 
because they need to recharge their batteries and come back. Amazing. Um, in corporate, the other the other huge win for you is that people will switch companies and switch jobs. So oh. If you're in touch with not just the person at Facebook, but if you stay in touch with the members who are actually through it. Yes. And then yeah, one of them oh, leaves, yeah. somebody's leaving next, next month and they're going to Google and they're going to, they're, they're going to TikTok and they're going to other companies. That's and brilliant. If you're in touch with them now, now you have a Google program and now you have a TikTok program and now you have an Airbnb program. That and is a have, really, yeah. And I, right? that's how, that's how Facebook found me is that I have my experience on Airbnb. So it's, that's really, you know, the way they found me, they booked me through Airbnb. So the language that you use to talk about it. At the top is the healing with horses, but then tell me the benefits I'm going to get out of it. You're yeah. going to learn how to be a better leader for yourself and for your team. You're going to learn yes. how to improve your communication skills. You're going to learn boom, 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 like all mm-hmm. through the power of horses. And the personality stuff doesn't matter. Like it, it matters to your process, but it's not a selling prop to okay. get people to come in. I'm not coming in because I need to know if I'm a Dante or I'm a Tracer or, or whatever, right? And, and it also puts you into a world of Myers Briggs and all the other companies that now we have to like. Why is yours better than Myers Briggs? We already paid for Myers Briggs. Why do I care about the four horse, you know, uh, ideas? Like it does, you you still do it because it's important because people will heal differently. But it's not in the not in the presentation because I don't care about the how. I care about what I'm going to get out of it. Of course. And what I get out of it is I'm going to be a better leader. I'm going to be more self aware. I'm going to heal my wounds. I'm going to be a better communicator. I'm going to like, whatever the things are that you actually will help people with. That's the pitch. Okay. Keen with horses. It's a three day in, in person experience or a three hour online experience or whatever it is where you will learn how to boom, 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 yep. all through the power of amazing horses. That's the pitch. And uh, now you should feel like, what are those point forms of like, what are the things that you actually get? Be a better leader, improve your communication skills, heal from your right. trauma, what whatever you get, those. Not what it is for sure. What, it, what, it, what is that? What do you say? What it, what it does, not what it is. You know, like, what do I get? How do, how am I a better human? Yeah. How am I a better human as a result of this? Like if I'm okay. going to, if I'm going to, you know, if I'm going to a doctor, I'm going to have a surgery. What do I care? I care about not having yeah, anymore, you don't, you don't anybody, care what right? kind of scalpel he's using. Exactly. But that's what yeah. you're talking about. Like, I, so here's the anesthesia we're going to use. And here's a scalpel we're going to use. And here's like, like, who cares? All I care about is, is the cancer gone by the end of this thing, right? That's what they care about. So, but it's still important to have the right scalpel and right anesthesia and right. So like you still follow the process. Right. It's just not the market. The, that's not great marketing telling me that uh, the Dante or Trace or whatever because it's the uh, process that people don't care about. Right. right. Well, I'm a creator. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a generator. I I'm, I'm definitely not a marketer, but. Well, but this is it. This, this is that. And it, it's just simple tweaks like that. Because mm-hmm. if you're going to say, if you have it on your website that, okay, you know, healing with horses and you switch it from figure out what your personality, your horse personality type is. And if you're a Dante or whatever else, which won't make sense to people, but then if right. you say, well, I'm going to teach you how to be a better communicator and be a better leader and be a X, Y, Z, those little tweaks make a huge difference for people to say yes or no to you. Right. I'm looking at my website now. I haven't been in my website in ages because I don't change it ever. So, but I'll, I, cause I, I'm not sure what it actually even says as my headline for Empower your soul, discover your purpose, live your Zen life. Welcome to Zenergen. No. no. Deal with horses. Where's the horses in there? There's no horses in there at all. There's Dante. There's Dante. <laughs> I can't see it. You, you got to bring see. it lower. You got to bring it a little. I see your TV. There you go. Yeah. Okay. But okay. But this is the thing. That could be anything, right? Like Tony Robbins might say that and put a picture of a horse. It doesn't mean that I'm going to actually get a horse experience. Got it. It's healing with horses <laughs> or heal with horses. Okay. And, and it's an exclusive three day in person or three hour online event with horses live. Will you will learn how to bang, 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 bang. And if it's a, if it's a, like, show me a little video of the horse online or show me a screenshot of the zoom people with the, with Dante there or whatever. Cause, okay. Cause that could be anything like people have, on, if you just think about personal development websites, people will often have sunrises and mountains and nature scenes and horses and lions. And it doesn't mean I'm going to go pet a lion, right? Right. So just the fact that you have a jumping horse doesn't mean I'm going to get, I don't think I'm getting a horse experience through this. Got it. 
Because all of the wording you use just sounded personal development. Yeah. Well, that's really, that's pretty much what it is, you know, personal development, coaching, healing, leadership. But, but the biggest thing that you give is the horses. The, yes. Like, what's your aha difference? It's, it's uh, the horses. Oh, my gosh. I guess, you know, I've, I've heard so many things di- different. I get so many, 50% every time. The next person will tell me, don't work, don't mention the horses. It's not about the horses. It's about you. It's about the healing. It's about the leadership. You start talking about horses, people think horseback riding. People think sea biscuit. Don't don't even bring the horses up. But what are we selling? Leadership and healing. But through horses. Right. Like Ugh. otherwise you're so just a, you're just a you're just a speaker. And then it's like, why should I hire you instead of Brene Brown, instead of Tony Robbins, instead of whoever else? But you're well, you're not probably a little less expensive. Well, but, but <laughs> great. But you're not just you don't want to be hired just to be a speaker. Yeah. It's the experience with the horses that I'm getting. Mm hmm. Uh, OK. It's like it's it's every time I turn around, it's someone telling me the exact opposite, you know, to do well, one you know, or the other. Pick, pick your mentor and then run. Like and go and 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 start and start. Uh, yeah. What do you do on a what do you do on a horse? Gallop, gallop. Like yes. pick your mentor and gallop and go gallop. Yeah. instead of like coming back to the starting gate and starting over each time. Oh my god, I can't believe you just said that. That's like that's what I that's been the problem. That's been my number one issue is like trying to, to not you know either not staying with something long enough or st- or yeah. Hugo says trust your instincts. You know. Horses, horses, horses. I'm looking at some of the comments. It's like, yeah, I, I, to your point, it is, you know, it's, it's tough. It's a, it's a tough sell. And I, you know, I mean, I guess if I keep saying it's tough, it will be, but that's, this has been my biggest stumbling block is to but, try. And- but it's not, I don't think it's that tough a sell. I think, I think it's, um, I think if you didn't have the horses, it'd be a really tough sell. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm a personal development person i'm a speaker i can help transform your culture and change yeah, your leadership one, and a, and one out of a sea of people trying doing to that do or that. hi i'm jen i've got my own personality test that uh, can help you figure out it's like if you're 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 a giant sea of, of tons of people like yeah why should i it. hire you yeah that's tough the healing with horses is is different it's fun it's unique it's like oh my gosh a breath of fresh air finally the yep. only thing is make the connection. Like, well, how does being around the horses, what's the experience I get that's going to help me get better at leadership and communication and self-awareness and healing and, you know, wh- whatever else you're doing. Awesome. But, but it opens the door to conversation where they, they get on a call with you and then they ask the question, Hey, yep. Jen, how do I, how do we do this? Right. But the it. horses becomes your, your end to make it different. It, it's a reason yep. to have a conversation. Agreed. And most of the stuff they're doing is so boring and corporate and sucks anyway. I trust. That's so true. That's so, so if you're true. giving people an experience that's like, wow, that was how many, how many people at teams are really excited about the team building exercise they're about to go on. <laughs> right. It's like, if I hit another team building exercise, I'm going to leave right. this team. <laughs> right. Well, it's so, to hear the feedback, you know, that, you know, after, after someone experiences this, that the feedback is 100%. I had, I, I I don't, my, once somebody comes and does a little taste of this, you know, my conversion rate is, you want to hear the number? It's over 65%. So so now you need to follow up with everybody. That's that that, once, once they get come and and do one thing of almost, almost two thirds. That's a, you need to like, why are they not coming back for another thing in three months? No, that that's not the problem. I need, I, because I need, I need, I need more of what I really need because they do come back, but I need more of them. I am, I don't have enough of those. I'm just at that. Like you said, to your point, um, I'm back at the starting gate again because I keep changing what I feel like my messaging needs to be, you know, and you're right about the website. I do need to make that change. Um, that's absolutely, I think that's going to be critical and, but healing with horses, leadership and empowerment with horses is that's it. I mean, that's really it, what it is and, and what it does. You got, you got my brain going for sure. I knew you would because, you know, I, I, I watch all your stuff and you, you really do have a, a way to, to really shift the mindset. And it's just that little tiny 
thing that's going to yeah, move the needle. It's not that much work. Like, no, I don't have to redo my entire website. I just need to change the thing and put healing with horses. And yeah, yeah. Like pictures. we don't need to go build a thousand page website. This is no. not a giant project that's going to take no. months to finish. No, right? I agree. Like, so the two most important takeaways from this would be one, like the, the branding and positioning of it, healing yeah. with horses, the horses are front and center and here are the benefits you're going to get, which, which you could do today, you know, just update it easy. Yeah. And then the second part is just the, the follow up and the, the deal structure where we're trying to get annual deals and any speaking gigs are trying to come on there every year. What is a, what is a quarterly, like, how do you come in and you have one great experience and then turn that into four experiences over the next year? Absolutely. And then, and, and then different departments and referrals and, and referrals that. and follow-ups. And, and then a hundred percent, the, the quest, quick, a quick question then, what, what would you think could be like a great entry offer? Because I've done like the five day challenge thing. I've done, you know, I've, I've played with a million different entry level things that are free, excuse me, free or low cost, what, you know, what would you say would be a, a good, cause a lot of, I'm still doing a five day challenge and I'm not sure a challenge is the right thing. I mean, where would you, and that's free. And I'm, I do events once every couple, I mean, I'm always on doing a something, but where would be a good entry level based on what you are, you know? You just have to think, what is the, having like not having experienced it, you got to think if somebody's going through, and they're spending five days with you. What is the what is the easiest to digest? Aha! Uh-huh. Because a lot of like the deeper inner work, you can't just change in a shift in a second. Correct. But what are the things that create create big ahas in a short amount of time? And that's the thing to get them to taste. Like it's the appetizer. Like it tastes delicious, but it's not yep. going to fill you up. Right. What What would that look like? Do you think? Like what? Well, would I don't know. Appetizer? Like you got to think through your experience of of having helped so many people. What is the appetizer to get people into it so they they feel like, wow, this is delicious. I want more. How do I right. get more? That's you know, and that we just keep playing around and playing around with that, like trying to figure out what the best appetizer is for it. Yeah. Like, what's the best lead? What's the but best lead gen experience? You know, you, you honestly may not even need it if you do a good job on the other two things that we talked about. That's fair. If you fix your website in the position and also how you talk about it. Like if you, if you rewind this back and, and explain how you, how did you introduce this topic to me? It all started with the four personality types of your horses and Dante and saying, I'm a Dante and explain this. Like none of that matters yet. Like yes. once I'm in, then that matters. But to explain what you do, that stuff doesn't matter yet. Like, Hey, I'm Jen. I help people heal through the power of horses and I help people X, Y, Z, right? Communication skills, leadership skills, right? That's going to make it a lot more already is going to make it easier for people to understand what you do. Not fully, not to like the details, right? Like I don't understand how the surgeon is going to cut the thing out of me, but I understand the result of this thing. And I'm curious to learn, you do what you heal people through horses. This is crazy. Yeah. That's that's the response that I get. So it creates a conversation, right? Yeah. Which is what we want. And right. then two, if you do a good job with the follow-up, if you think about everybody, every speaking thing that you've done and ask them to come on and do another one, if you think about every organization you've helped, even people who are at your in-person retreat four years yeah. ago. Right, right. And they've all, like not all, but a bunch of them moved on to other jobs. A bunch of them are still the same company that they're at. And you just followed up with everybody and said, hey, I've, I've, I'm doing this online program now. You'll get business. Yep. Yep. That's, that's a no brainer. And, um, I've, I've started, um, you know, imp- re establishing my LinkedIn more because I think going to biz- going to corporations, going to businesses. And cause when you get to go, when you get to businesses, you get to individuals as well. So I wouldn't even worry about that yet. Like that's, that's scale and growth and where, where it all can go. But Let's get you making some good corporate money. Let's get your center opened up back to the way that you like it. You know, yeah. I mean, there's, oh, there's yeah. huge, there's huge opportunities just doing that. And you already have some momentum and traction there. Like selling yeah. to America, the consumer is the hardest game of all. A million percent. Yes. So it doesn't mean that we can't get there, especially if your mission is, I want to change the conversation around horses and, and showcase how much of a problem this is then ultimately we need to get to America, but to go to America from the start 
is insane. Like that's what I've been doing though. That's, that's exactly what I've been doing is trying to crack the, crack the big nut first. But the, but the path to cracking the big nut is through the more exclusive, expensive stuff. You're like Tesla yeah. started with the Tesla Roadster. It's a six figure car that you bought. And then they got to the slowly making it more and more and more affordable. Cause mm-hmm. what's their goal. They want to change. You know, they want every vehicle to be electric. They want to, they want to save the world from pollution. Right. So but they started with the high end stuff. They started with their niche and started making money. Like you need to start making money yeah, so that you can afford to do all the things that you want to do. I love it. That's, you know, that just reinforces what I, what I've been thinking about that. Like get, you know, just get the, get the cash flow, get the flow of money coming in through people that understand, get my, get my, you know, early adopters and my innovators. And how many, how many people have you helped that you actually have some kind of email address or phone number for? Probably about 6,000 emails. Oh my God, Jen, that's what, that's, that's all you need to do. Yeah. D- fix the website. We can do that today. Yep. Don't stress about the perfect picture and all that. Just change the language around what we talk. You can watch this back. We'll save it if you want. Uh, and then start messaging the 6,000 people who've okay. been through the program, who, who already know how, how great it is because they've witnessed it. So the, right. the, the threshold to, to explain it isn't there because they already know. And then ask them how, how they might be able to bring it inside their corporation. Amazing. Okay. And then simple. you'll be filled up. Like if you do a good job on the 6,000, you'll be filled up for the rest of the year. Yes. You have 6,000 people who've been through your thing. Yeah, for who sure. Who know you, who like, they may not be your best friend and like follow everything you do, but no. they've, they've experienced it. Something. So right. They've experienced something. They know the power of healing with horses. And so some of them will take you right. If, if you just had 1%, you had 60 people take you inside the corporation to line something up. You're busy for the rest of the year. Now we're looking at how do I hire more people? How do I, explain? Oh, how do I yes. get my, right? Yep. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that day. That's going to be amazing. But, but that's the path. Like, don't worry about, I wouldn't even worry about your book. Don't worry about the social media stuff. Don't worry about somebody here following you. You fix the website with clear positioning based on what we talked about. And then you, you reach out to the 6,000 people, get on calls with them, let them know that you're trying to get into their, their company because you want to bring this message of healing with horses to the world. I love it. You're right. 60 people. That would be it. I would be so busy. I wouldn't know what to do. It's not the path to like crazy. It doesn't change the world yet, right? Like 6,000 companies that the 60 people, like that doesn't change the world yet and accomplish your mission, but it gives you the momentum and the cash flow. To be able to then to. go and build the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Well, there, that's, that's, you know, marching orders are in place. That's easy. And everything you said is easy and I can do any of it. Like that's not a problem. You're already doing everything. So the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this true. is now, this is just now more, what, what are those things that the horses wear? The blinders? Blink- blinkers. Blinkers okay. and blinders. Yeah. Blinkers are on now, Jen. This is yeah. it. <laughs> so much out. No, no, no. <laughs> well, and that's and you just you just said what you know what Bellas do. That's what Bellas do. They're like, oh, shiny. We call I call it shiny penny syndrome. You know, yeah. shiny penny syndrome. Get, get, you, you get some of these. Put them on. You know, or, or, or like or put them in front of your desk or something. You know, yes. it's like that's your little oh virtual reminder that. Okay, I'm being a Bella again. Uh, <laughs> we're 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 stopping our own progress. Oh Focus. My God. And those things actually, I think those things are actually kind of not so. Those are bad. I don't like them. Well, I, you know, but the, the, the idea of them is to focus, yeah, right? They should, yeah, right, right. But just staying focused and and getting that, like you said, you know, get get pick pick your horse and ride it, you know. Yeah, and that's just it. It's like my zone of genius is the, the the metaphors and the stories that I can create around anything. That's you know, yes, I need focus. Thank you, thank you for that. People in the, in the comments are like, she needs focus. Yeah, thanks, guys. So, and it's and it's so obvious when you have a boulder in your eye, right? It's tough to see around, but that's really great advice. I do. That's, have, yeah. that's your that's your next like that's your next step. If you do a good job with those six thousand and you fix the messaging. And you just fix how you talk about it. Yep. You'll get all the business you need for the rest of the year. And then we can worry about scaling. And then yep. we can worry about how you open a center in every state in the, you know, across the country. And how do we save 
a million horses next year from being slaughtered and how, you know, whatever, like the big things are. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. That's amazing. Thank you so much. All right. (laughs) Thank you, Jen. Yes. Thanks for a great great session. I hope, I hope everybody that's watching got a lot out of it as well. So thank you very much. Amazing. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Jen. Take care. Bye. (laughs) Cheers. If you want to see me coach another entrepreneur, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. If you haven't posted in a year and now you're trying to post to all the platforms, that could be a huge trap. I love for now stuff. If you never do for now, then you get stuck of going another year without making content.